Hi everyone, happy new year. Um, my name's Ellen and I am a free, well, kind of freelancer slash one of a two person business. Um, and we are called Content by the Sea and we are a, a content agency and web design specialists. Uh, previously last year, I recorded a Notion walkthrough about how I use Notion, the project management tool uh, to run the business. And I just thought I would go a little bit more about how I create my own dashboard um, I've changed a lot of it since the last video. It's much more minimal now. I couldn't possibly maintain uh, what I was trying to maintain. And I do also use uh, like a, a paper bullet journal as well. So maybe that'll do that in a separate video. Um, and hopefully um, anybody who's looking to try Notion in 2021 or wants to move their project management over into a digital tool won't feel too intimidated and can see that it's actually quite easy to do. So we have a lot of pages here on the left, but I'm only really going to talk through my dashboard which is what I call Ellen's place um, you can do everything that I do for free uh, the only reason that we have the premium is because there's two of us so as far as I understand notion is free for one person which is fantastic for freelancers and students uh, you get a certain amount of blocks but I think but it's a lot um, and then uh, we, you know if you want to have other users on whether that's clients suppliers or, or partners uh, then you do pay but I don't think it's hugely expensive uh, I will link below the the, the price and the, the price and details but yeah it's it's really affordable and we we love it and we run the mostly run the whole business from it to be honest uh so yeah i've got this little section called ellen's place and it's basically where i spend the most of the day uh i only really go other places if i'm looking for very specific information uh so i just got a little quote at the top there are advantages to putting in time and effort to master a skill and there's also a need for balance which i think is for me something that i was Kind of want to keep in my mind because can be a workaholic and can become quite hooked on things so um yeah time and effort but also a need for balance and this is why i've took a good 10 days off at christmas and and uh just you know coming back to work now so uh, i've got like a cheesy little section which is basically craig and one of our dogs harmony um for those of you who don't know the business is myself and my partner craig and then we have two rescue Retired Grace and Greyhounds, that's one of them, Harmony, and we might see Potter on some of the other pages. If you follow me on Twitter, then you'll already have seen the dogs. I've got a very little quick links section, which I've just created recently because I found myself clicking these pages a lot. So CRM is a list of all of my clients, their current rates, uh, the hour, the invoices that I last sent. Uh, you can't send invoices from Notion, but I do use like a little system just to monitor the ones that I've sent and whether they've been paid. Sales Wiki, which is, um, new contracts so if i sign a new uh copyright and retainer then i'll go in there download a blank version of my contract and fill it in uh bank deals which actually sits under sales wiki but i've got a separate section for that because we recently moved over to a starling business account and uh, i had to update the bank deals on everything so i still put on invoices now please know that we've changed our bank deals because there's still sometimes people paying in the wrong account and then i've got a separate web design page so in there i've got all of the details for my name servers and my reseller hosting i've got this area here which is brand new again it's a, a dump basically it's not even finished yet but it's a, uh, a content dump for ideas so sometimes i'll come up with something and i'll think that would make a good user that would make a good blog that would make a good twitter thread whatever um so for example flexible planning i like to talk about the fact that i do like to plan and i love notion but i'm not so stuck to it that um, I don't, you know, move up, navigate away from it. The same goes for bullet journaling. Sometimes I won't do it for two days and it's not the end of the world. So yeah, that's an idea in there. When I create a new idea, so say I'm just going to write new idea. It makes a little page. At the minute, I've only got content type. So this might be an article or a Twitter thread or a newsletter. Uh, newsletter topic, I guess. Uh, and then platform could be newsletter. That's how I'm kind of because sometimes this could cross over. So let's just change that quickly. Use that uh, topic. Uh, so yeah, and then I'll also need to create a one for status. So this is brand new. So at the moment, all of these are not like they've, they've not been done. So um, I'll put in progress. I'll change the color of these to match a traffic light system. Uh, in a second, uh, completed and uh, to do. Okay, so uh, I'm, because I am the way I am, 
completed. I'm going to make green and to do, ah, I can stay yellow, that'll do. So um, at the minute, all of these are technically to do. And so in the future, I suppose I'm not actually showing you how to create databases, but I maybe will in the future. But say I only wanted to show this list. Um, I've only wanted this list to show uh, content ideas that I've not used, so brand new ones. I would uh, go on to the little three dots here. I would press filter, add filter, and I would go status is not, whoops, status is not complete. So that would just show the ones that aren't complete. Uh, and then say I've done this one called new idea and moved to complete and it disappears off the list, but it doesn't disappear forever. It's just not viewable because of the filter. Uh, the next thing that I've got is, I suppose I don't need this useful links anymore. See, I've just been rebuilding this and uh, it's not 100% up to scratch. I've got this, which is the master task list and it is like the best thing about using Notion. I learned how you create a master task list by, uh, from Marie Poulin, so I'll link her channel below. Um, it looks like we've got no tasks, but it's because um, obviously we finished everything off in um, December, so everything was pretty much ticked off. Uh, but if you actually went to all tasks in the list, uh, you would see that there's a there's a lot of stuff, but most of it's complete. So uh, we're starting quite fresh this year. Uh, this is a really useful area because this database is currently viewable by priority. So the way I basically have decided to run the business is extreme high priority, high priority, medium and low. Extreme means today um, or tomorrow, today and tomorrow. High priority means this week. I suppose I could change the tags, but in my mind, and in Craig's mind, extreme just means like you need to do this now. And I mean, I'm always like, eh, maybe I'll get that done at some point. Every week, I usually assess what's in the list. Normally, there's quite a lot of blocks, and I'll drag and then move away. So within each task, let's just make a new one for the sake of it. You've got the client. So I click on that, and that's actually a relational database to my CRM. So that actually shows a list of all my clients, and I would like tag it next to that. So when it comes to paying, sending invoices to new clients, uh, to, to those clients, I'll be able to see every task that's linked to that client. I hope that makes sense. Status, so I'll just put in progress. Uh, actually, I'll just put, not started. Uh, due date, if there is one, proofread, because we proofread each other's work, everything gets read by one of the others. Uh, the week that it's attributed to uh, the tags, so that could be whatever kind of work it is. Um, meeting notes, which I'll talk about in a minute. Content ideas, if it's related to any of these at the top. Uh, if there's a signed contract, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also have these templates. So I have uh, some clients on retainer. So I have created a template so that every month I just create a new task, which is their monthly retainer. So for example, for this company, Rise Elevator, I'll press new month and it fills itself. So I'll just put a Rise Elevator January. And this will be the January retainer. So it's high priority automatically, but we'll move it up to extreme. The due date is, I'm sure this whole stuff can be autofilled. I just haven't worked it all out yet. Uh, and then at the end, it's the, uh, what they get every month. So I've created a little checkbox and they get articles and a social calendar. So uh, that's already in here every month. Normally Craig does a lot of this. So once it's done, he ticks it all off. Uh, that's it. And then we'll move the status over to complete. So. Uh, today or tomorrow, I'll go and go for all these, the ones that are currently active retainers, and I'll create those tasks for January. Um, and if you work on a basis of, on the basis of retainers, like we do, we also have projects, which is a different um, kettle of fish. But if you work on retainers, the template tool is so good because you don't have to create a new task. When I first started out, I was creating a task for every one of these little things. So I was saying task, article, topic, task. And the master task list was just getting like chaos. So now I have a task for the retainer and then the checklists underneath. We have um, a little diary of months and a little diary of weeks. I used to have days if you've watched my past video, but I just couldn't keep up with it. I do all the daily stuff in the bullet journal. Um, January, uh, I've already created. So it's essentially just a month. There's only one week attributed to it so far. Meetings is a relational database as well. Uh, and I'll show you that. That's the last thing I'm gonna show you. Highlights, challenges, grateful, revenue, profit. Uh, that pulls through from the CRM. And status. I don't know why that's in month. I suppose it'll be like if the month is done, that probably can be hidden. Yep. And then weekly. 
I've already created the week. There's not really much information in here. I suppose I might dump in some stuff if I've got meetings or something that I really need to be aware of that week. But this is just where all of the tasks come together. Newsletter topic that pulls through from content ideas. So say I've decided that this Wednesday's newsletter topic is going to be flexible planning. I will make sure that it's linked here. And then I can look back and say, oh, on that week I wrote that newsletter. Finally, meeting notes. And I, this is, I think, still the same from the last video, but it's just so, so good. So the way that I do it is I have it in calendar view. It is a database and uh, it's a database of meeting notes and meetings. So say I'm going to go into, let's go back to a past one. Well, let's just create a new one. Oh, if you go to November, for example, you can see some of the meetings I went to. And every time I'm at a meeting, I just create a new one. So say I was at one today, that is Sunday the 3rd, is the day I'm recording this, I'll press add an item. I usually put the client name, so client name, and then maybe if it's about something specific. Attending, if it's me and Craig, or just me, so maybe it's just me. What's the focus of the meeting? So maybe we're talking about 2021 content. Who's the client? If it's not already an existing client, it might be a lead. So they might not have signed with us yet. So I'll put that there. And that's actually from the sales pipeline. Uh, actions is which is linked to the, the um, master task list. So say in this meeting, we agree that we're gonna write uh, three articles. Uh, I will create that and then it will populate in, as long as it's labeled correctly, it will populate in the scroll up in the master task list. So. This is one thing that really, really helped me was when I went to a meeting, we would all be like, yeah, 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 we'll do that by next time. And then so many of us would just forget or the next, and then you would have to rush it before the next meeting, especially if you have monthly client meetings. And then normally I will just use the salary at the bottom to dump whatever the conversation is about. So um, if it's an interview about a case study, I will just write it all in there as we go, or maybe afterwards, but typically as we go. Uh, and then if that, if within there, there are tasks and I might create them afterwards, week of the meeting, month of the meeting, and then ideas generated is more like a vague, it's that area at the top, which is like that kind of vague dump, dumping ground where it's not being assigned as like an official task yet, but it is an idea. So that's, I think that's everything that's on my little, my little place. It's not massively like aesthetic, but it's also not hopefully too cluttered or the other way around. Um, I've played around with this for a long time now, and uh, I used to have, a daily agenda and as like I said I couldn't keep up with that uh, even the weekly one's not ideal and it doesn't always get filled out um, for me the, if you were going to start this from scratch which maybe I'll do a separate video about how to create a, um, a dashboard from scratch for a freelancer um, what I would do is I would definitely try and move your CRM in there I would definitely create a sales wiki which is where you put your contracts and your bank details and stuff I find that really useful uh, sales and marketing, I haven't got an area. I suppose I might create that now. Uh, brand, I've got one called Brand Assets, which is our, our uh, logos and colors and things, which is really, really useful when both of us are working on stuff. And uh, this area, content ideas, if you're one of those people that gets ideas at totally random times, like I am, then that's really, really helpful. Master task list is just like chef's kiss, like the best thing. Um, monthly review, weekly agenda, and then meeting notes. That's all I need at the moment. That's not to say that in six months I might have changed it, but uh, hopefully this video helped. And if anybody would like to see another video about how to create a dashboard from scratch or how to create a, rel a relational database for task planning or templates for retainers or anything like that, then just, just let me know over on Twitter or I suppose in the comments below. But it's it's this whole youtube thing's new to me um with regards to creating business content so thank you so much for watching we're just nearly at 15 minutes so i'm actually impressed by how quickly i went through that hopefully speak to you guys soon bye